so usually it's a physiological self limiting cause which will be transient which will improve over that and it will be there otherwise unilateral testes we will see a lot of them who are persisting that is non endocrine usually and then if you have a bilateral you have to start thinking of a possibility whether there is any endocrine disorder from that regard so we'll touch questions you have to answer is is it really a undefined testes is it really a anorchia or is the testes present or not and finally what is the cause so if you talk about is it undefined testes you have to use specific criteria wait for at least 4 months of age correct for the preterm gestation you need to have no scrotal testes on inspection you will have a poor scrotal growth as against a good growth in the setting of anorchia <clears throat> you should ask in the tailor position or a squatting position tailor like a frog leg position you can ask them ask them to have a cough always use warm hands if your hands are cold your cremastic reflex will become hyperactive and you will be missing the descent in that regard palpate using a two hand method so one hand is at the level of the uh, superficial inguinal ring the other is more towards the upper part of the scrotum so superficial inguinal ring and the scrotal sac and then you try to milk it away so as viba was saying identifying retractile testes is very important you have a supra scrotal location with a history which the mother will give you that okay there was a history of descent the scrotal sac will be well formed there will be a hyperactive premastic reflex and if you uh, weaken this reflex by keeping the test in the scrotum for a minute it will stay there these are the parameters which will be there you just need to observe for a secondary ascent which may happen till 18 years of age which i have already discussed now the next question is is it really anorchia so when you're talking about this is that when you have a bilateral undescended testis the question is whether it is really absent testis or are we dealing with a problem abdominal testis which needs to be removed because it's a very important decision because that will allow you to skip surgery if you can prove that there is no testis you don't need to do a surgery in that regards so now ultrasound is basically indicated for a non palpable one in obesity cases mainly where you may miss because of the obesity you may not be able to palpate well the inguinal and the canalicular region you can also identify other things like a mullerian structure so if you have bilateral nascent testis and mullerian structure it automatically becomes a xx dsd diagnostic accuracy is not great often you will not identify and that's the problem so what we rely upon in terms of making sure that there is no testis now the role of this evaluation is to make sure there is no testis you don't need to do a exploration is to go ahead with a testicular function marker and the major role here is that of amh which is the predominant one which will give you a clue inhibin b and hcg stimulation i've already seen also cases in which fsh is also very high but if you want to choose one test it is amh amh is the best marker for sertoli cell function so lh fsh can also be there so as we discussed earlier that amh levels are higher in the early childhood so most of them will come to you around 1 to 3 years of age get a amh done it will be helpful a low testosterone or a low inhibin b may be a difficult thing to really distinguish but what is characteristic here is that you will have zero amh zero inhibin b zero testosterone and a very high fsh so normally we say that inhibitory processes are going to start late we talked about turner syndrome in that your fsh may be normal till around bone age of around 12 weeks that is because of the inhibitory process but in anorchia because there is a complete absence there is no inhibin b there is no amh there is no testosterone your levels of fsh will be very very high so you will find fsh very high you may find zero testosterone so testosterone is anyway zero in many of these age group if you do that report but your amh will be undetectable so undetectable is something the word which is more important when we talked about 10 20 it was more for detecting testes if there is no testes there should be no amh i think that's the major message so even if your amh is there then you start thinking okay whether there is a problem there is a dsd or something else where is this amh coming from if it's zero it means zero because you don't have any ovaries how would the amh come from 
in xx individuals the two three level will be coming from ovaries so you should have undetectable amh in this scenario this is a good test to go ahead earlier we used to do a lot of hcg stimulation test but now it is not really work required because amh is a very good idea from that regards so in an orchia your amh will be low fsh will be high you will have no increase in test because there is no testis there will be no increase in hcg stimulated testosterone this will give you a clue the final question is what is really the cause so look at the clinical picture if you have a sort of a atypical genitalia think of a xx dsd a ch or work up as a xy dsd both scenarios can be there and we have discussed this a lot if you have abdominal if you have microcephaly if you have digit abnormalities syndactyly think of a smith lemley opitz syndrome lorenz moon beetle syndrome you can identify mphd can also be a cause of micropenis and undesired testis as could be a growth hormone igf1 deficiency scenario as well now how do you evaluate and this is a very important guideline from the american neurological association about cryptorchidism what they say is that you need to refer at the right time so you do not wait what they are saying here is that they send by 6 months so all this 4 6 12 these are all acceptable people may have variation they are talking about 6 months corrected for gestational age this is an important thing to remember now very importantly what they are saying actually is that do not perform ultrasound or other imaging abnormalities so like if you look at guideline if they are saying not do mean that it has been done a lot if you go for the pcos guidelines it says do not use myo inositol now why would somebody would be uh, it's a funny statement do not use it they should tell you what should be used which means it's being abused a lot and they don't want you to do that so what they are saying is that do not perform an ultrasound because it will not give you any help in that perspective now very importantly what they are saying third statement is very important if you have a bilateral non palpable gonad you should exclude ch this is what they have said and then look at amh level and this is a very very important i think this was the first time when it became very very clear that amh will be a very important role to identify a abdominal testis which is present in that perspective so these guidelines are very very important from that regards so if you look at the approach i would say look at the common reversible causes correct for the gestational age look for ectopic testis <laughs> look for palpable gonads carefully in whatever way we talked about if they are present <clears throat> look for hypospadias if you have hypospadia with undesired testis it becomes dsd we said just penile hypospadia is not dsd but if you have undesired testis on one side and you have hypospadia you start thinking more about xy dsd in your evaluation goes from testosterone levels you will see low testosterone you will classify based upon whether there is salt wasting into that salt uh, star side chain cleavage if you have <clears throat> hypertension 17 hydroxylase normal salt status you start thinking of lhcg receptor defect or a possibility of a 17 beta hsd defect if your testosterone is high then partial ais versus a uh, androgen insensitivity so that is a different ball game altogether now if you have got no hypospadia and you have got undesired testis it's a simple case refer for surgery 4 to 11 months whenever you want to go ahead now if you are not finding a palpable gonad and it is unilateral i think there's nothing much you have to look at don't go for okay there is a newbin like structure the other testis seems to be enlarged and all those things this does not really 100% exclude the abdominal testis your aim is to be 100% specific in excluding it so then go for exploration that's what with the recommendation would be if you have a bilateral undesired testis and you can't identify that again your antenna should be open for a dsd look for mullerian structure if the mullerian structures are present then you have a xx dsd get a 17 ohp level done if 17 ohp is very high think of 21 not very high think of 11 or 3 beta as is the normal think of aromatase and then this is how things will go forward the next thing is that if you do not have a mullerian structure get a amh level done if it's low it means it's anarchia if amh levels are in the male range you have to do a exploratory surgery which will be required to see for these gonads